Here's problem 13.1. <clears throat> five kilogram masses are located at points in the XY plane as shown in the figure. What is the magnitude of the resultant force caused by the other two masses on the mass at the origin? All right, so we have three masses, all of them five kilograms. And these first two masses are 30 centimeters or 0.3 meters apart. And these other two are 0.4 meters apart, 40 centimeters. And we want to find the force on the mass at the origin, this one. Now there will be an attractive force to each of the other two masses. So it will feel a force of attraction that's called F1 to the top force, or top mass. And then it will feel a force of attraction F2 to the mass to the right. Let's find the magnitude of these two forces and then add them together vectorially. Force 1 is going to equal mass G times mass 1 times mass 2 over the distance between them squared. That's going to be 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 5 kilograms times 5 kilograms over the distance between them 0.3 meters squared. So we figure out the magnitude of that force 6.67 times 10 minus 11 times 25 divided by 0.3 squared. I get 1.85 times 10 to the minus 8 newtons. And as we've drawn it, that, that force would be attractive in an upward direction, positive y direction. So as a vector, this F1 force would be equal to 1.85 times 10 to the minus 8 J newtons. All right, the other force, F2, has a magnitude of G mass 2 mass 3 over the distance between them squared, that's going to be 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 5 kilograms times 5 kilograms and the distance between them is 0.4 meters and we're going to square that. So that gives us a magnitude of 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 25 divided by 0.4 squared 1.04 times 10 to the minus 8 Newtons. And if I wrote that as a vector, that would be equal to 1.04 times 10 to the minus 8i newtons. Alright, so we have these two vectors, and if we add them together, our net force will be vector f1 plus vector f2, and that's going to be 1.04 times 10 to the minus 8 I plus 1.85 times 10 to the minus 8 J. That'll be our net force. Now notice that um, you know in our attractive force equation we have a negative sign, and we didn't use that because we just found the magnitude of these forces. And the reason we didn't use the negative sign is because we already established the direction of these forces by the fact that they are attractive forces. So when we found that F1 was going in an up direction like this and F2 was going in the right direction like this, then we didn't have to worry about the negative sign after that because we had already found what our definite directions were for these vectors. Okay, we want to find the magnitude of this resultant force. We've got the two components of the resultant force and so the magnitude of this force is going to be um, each component squared, add together, square root. So 1.04 squared plus 1.85 squared, all that square root times 10 to the minus 8, and that will give us the magnitude of this force. That is going to be 2.12 2 times 10 to the minus 8 
newtons. That is the magnitude of the net force on the mass at the origin. Its direction will be given in this direction. We can calculate that angle if we wished. The angle would be the inverse tangent of the y component over the x component. So that would be the inverse tangent of 1.85 over 1.04. And let's just find out what that is. sixty point six degrees so that force is going at an angle of sixty point six degrees from the positive x-axis and so there's our magnitude and direction for the net force on the mass at the origin